We're just weeks away from the upcoming primary election. The big race is the Republican nomination for governor. Jay Block, Rebecca Dow, Mark Ronchetti, Greg Zanetti, and Ethel Mayharg are positioning themselves for the vote in June. Let's bring in our line of opinion panelists to discuss how things are shaping up. We'll get to the public forum last week in Albuquerque in just a few minutes, but let's start with new fundraising totals. Former weatherman Mark Ronchetti has a wide lead over his Republican opponents raising more than $2 million in the most recent reporting period. He has more than a million and a half left to spend. That's the big deal there. Uh, let me start with Laura, our Politico on the uh, panel today. How much of an advantage is that over other GOP contenders? We'll get to the names in a second, but that's a big old gap to have on hand. Sure, and I think that you know all things, all other things sort of you know, set aside, mm -hmm. the money race is a, is a huge issue. Um, it, it does two things. It signals that you have the ability to raise money. So you've somehow been able to persuade a, a base of support mm -hmm. to invest in you. So I think that sends a signal, not just to voters, but more so to other potential other donors as well and supporters. And so you have a ripple effect, both uh, in state, locally, but also nationally. And so it sort of uh, has a domino effect when you raise that much money. Mm -hmm. um, the other issue, though, as well, is it gives you just the reality is it gives you a bigger um, you know, war chest to be able to use for ads. So I expect to see a lot more ads in the coming weeks. We already have seen um, at least, I think there's maybe one or two out there for Ronchetti, but you're gonna, we're gonna expect to see a lot more of those ads. So we see the traditional introductory one where he talks about himself, his agenda, and then we'll see somewhere there's other people sort of um, you know, endorsing him or you know, speaking for him and talking about him being the, the greatest thing since sliced bread, that kind of uh, an ad. And then we're probably going to see some negative ads. There's going to have to be a way to to differentiate himself and attack some of his opponents. Mm -hmm. um, so far, they've taken aim at, um, you know, the, the current incumbent, Governor Lu Michelle Lujan Grisham. And also, of course, they're they're doing what they can to get onto the national border problems kind of uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, thread. But there's still going to have to be a way to distinguish. So I'm going to expect to see some negative ads as well. Mm -hmm. Tom, when you think about it, um, Lord just mentioned candidates are also making a push on advertising and a wave of new ads are recently coming out. One particularly polarizing show State Representative Rebecca Dow at the southern border talking about building Mr. Trump's wall. She's clearly trying to, trying to pull in voters from the far right, but it doesn't sort of match with her historical ideology. Uh, I think we can all see what the move is here, but I'm curious your opinion, uh, whether its chances for success uh, are viable. Well, um, short answer is yes, it is viable. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit more in depth on that. Uh, you know, with the financial gap of, uh, of Rebecca Dow, you know, raising 750000 to Ron Ketty's $2.1 million, mm -hmm. um, she, one of the very quickest ways to close that gap is with an endorsement from the Trump organization, if not the Donald himself. Mm -hmm. um, that will be a benefit to her or to anyone who gets that particular endorsement uh, to get to the primary, but it will be the death nail uh, in the general election. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it's really kind of one of those catch 22s, because I think the successful Republican candidate, whether it is Mr. Zanetti, Mr. Block um, or Ron, Mr. Ronchetti or Ms. Dow, you know, they're really going to need to show that they can bring the base without going too far to the right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they have to really maintain that middle ground. And a Trump endorsement is not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Rebecca, well, last point on money here. I don't want to uh, lose this out. Uh, our sitting governor has three point eight million on hand right now. But as a reminder, she spent $9.5 million in that 2018 victory. There's going to be a lot of money thrown around in this race, no matter who the Republicans uh, put up. Are we in a new territory here when it comes to, you know, financing, <laughs> you know, political campaigns here? Have we turned a corner we're never going back on? Well, we've, we, I mean, nationwide, states have been talking about, and local communities talking about how to address, uh, how to address campaign financing. And, right. You know, I, I, I really am grateful for the process that um, requires candidates disclose where their donations are coming from, because I think that speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. um, it also is just a disgusting um, display of how much money is fueling political elections. And then it makes you question, like, mm -hmm. why are why are these people in it? You know, is it really for the right reasons or is it all connected to mm -hmm. to money? 
um, it, it, it is, it's going to be, it's going to be big. I mean, you see even um, from on the national spectrum, you see the attention being given to, uh, to the southern part of New Mexico in that house race. There's going to be a lot of money in that race right. too, yep. Um, yep. Uh, trying to unseat Representative Harrell. So mm -hmm. uh, yes, I think we've, we've uh, turned a corner. I do think it, I, I think it does speak volumes uh, of that that Ron Ketty has outraised um, the other the other contenders in the Republican Party. Um, he's clearly not like he's not the favorite for the party, but maybe that's what the party needs. Mm -hmm. Interesting point there, um, Tom. Back to that forum last week, I mentioned the setup in front of 275 voters in Albuquerque. Each candidate shared their platforms, and perhaps the most specific was Ethel Mayhard. She's a former mayor of Cuba. She's running on an anti-abortion agenda, and abortion is also a key issue, of course, for the race for Republican Yvette Harrell's newly drawn second congressional district just mentioned. Does this issue favor either party here in New Mexico? Abortion can sometimes be a big one, depending. Yeah, it's, uh, it is definitely viewed as, uh, you know, amongst Republican circles as uh, something that is, you know, uh, you know, will bring people together uh, around a particular candidate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, reproductive, uh, you know, choice is, you know, as far as reproductive health, rather, is something that is will, will motivate the bases on both sides. Right. Uh, the question is, is when when you get down to the abortion rights issue, it's really more of an issue in this particular political environment of the judiciary. And the selection of the co of the coveted Supreme Court nominees. I know that plays more into the role of that Harrell mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the the second congressional district. But you know, really, that's you know, for a candidate who wants to you know use that as a platform, abortion, and to be successful in the general election. Um, I think that a good way to wedge that or to move it over is to focus on the judiciary aspect. Because it is something that will motivate a base, but it's something that will uh, will you know be a wedge issue in the general election. Mm -hmm. Good point there too. During the forum, by the way, Laura, uh, all the Republican candidates said they supported photo ID requirements for voting, and that was while Congress was in New Mexico to study the unique access our electoral system provides and getting lauded for it up and down. Uh, do New Mexicans want more requirements at the polls, or are we settled with this idea of? you know, voter ID and all that, because we've been going through that for a long time here. Well, I'm not surprised to see that all of the candidates for governor on the Republican side would support that. Mm -hmm. um, that's definitely um, has. No one's not going to su not support it, in other <laughs> words, right? right? Not in the Republican primary. Right. I mean, this is, you know, it's an example of both both parties do this during the primary. They play to their base. They mm -hmm. go to the extremes. And then during the general, they have to run back to the middle to try to get, you know, independence and crossover right. votes in order to win. So it's, you know, you see it on both sides. So I'm not surprised, but I don't think it's a settled issue. I think the vast majority of people, well, first of all, we're a Democrat leaning state. And then we have a lot of independents mm -hmm. who also will swing an election. And many of them don't feel like we need more restrictions um, in terms of photo IDs at the polls. So it's mm -hmm. it's one of those weird New Mexican like our weather where we're kind of schizophrenic <laughs> about stuff um, in mm -hmm. any given day. So yeah. I think that's a big issue. But I will say, you know, what's interesting to me now with um, the new congressional lines, we always call it the Southern District, right? And the Northern District. I'm on the west side of Albuquerque and I'm now part of that congressional district too. So there's a fair amount of um, of Albuquerque uh, precincts that are now part of that district. Mm -hmm. So whether it's, uh, you know, what kind of effect that will have, um, I'm not sure, but I think we're gonna end up seeing a different kind of turnout for that district um, by design, <laughs> probably, uh, right. in the general, at least. That's going to be fascinating. That is at, no question about it. Hey, Tom, a couple more hits I want to get on. The GOP is certainly the party to watch this primary. There's so much action, but signs of potential rift between Democrats and Santa Fe. We've heard reports of bitterness lingering over the governor's veto of that $50 million supplemental budget bill. Uh, now there's a new lawsuit from State Senator Jacob Candelaria against Senate Pro Tem Mimi Stewart alleging retaliation over a workplace discrimination investigation? What, where does this leave Democrats in, in November or even before? Well, it makes for a lot of interesting conversation. Yes. I will say that. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, you know, how it impacts the races, it doesn't impact. I think it's just more of the, I, as serious as the allegations are and mm -hmm. the issues are, um, I would say that it's, it's really more of just, you know, hey, did you hear about this? Did you hear about that? Um, I think what will be interesting uh, as far as one of the races to watch will be the uh, uh, the attorney general race, 
uh, I believe, with the uh, with Brian Cologne and then also with um, the Albuquerque. The Torres, yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that, I think, will be one of the key Democrat races that I'm going to be watching, just because that's where you'll kind of see a modern day clash of the titans. It, that will be a fun race. But I don't think any of the 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 other issues that are surfacing right now will actually impact that unless either one of them are somehow involved with mm -hmm. it, which I haven't heard. Good point. So, Rebecca, any bounds for Democrats? I mean, you know, are we over that baby budget, $50 million kerfuffle? Are we past all that at this point? I don't think they're I don't think they're past it. Yeah. I, think, uh, they're st I mean, they brought it up in the special, too. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I think we do we do see more evidence of um, dissension among the ranks, you know, that there is no no real like we're all on the same page singing from the same sheet of music you know you've got your more progressive democrats and then your your more right. traditional um yeah. uh democrats and um and uh it's uh, it, it we've seen how the, you know they, they they started to divide a few years ago in order to tackle some legislative races and and get out some of the um the long seated republicans mm -hmm. with more progressive members of the democratic party so um it, it like maybe a beast has been created and and they're they might just need to stay divided in order to um to see how this shakes out mm -hmm. laura do you want to do, you get 20 seconds on where democrats are be perfectly willing to give you a shot here if you got anything you want to <laughs> yeah that's a loaded question isn't it um <laughs> i don't have a crystal ball stay away from that ag's say, race <laughs> yeah, well don't don't get me started on the AG's race. <laughs> okay, um, but that aside, I I do you know it's it's unfortunate because I I'm a big fan of the Senate. Yeah. I mean I still have a, a place in my heart for the Senate over the House. I think it's the upper house of any of any governing body. It's the you know there's much more decorum, mm -hmm. and I feel like there is much less in this group of folks. There's so much mudslinging among senators. Yep. Um, I really miss kind of what you know the the level of of respect that they used to have. I just feel like there's been so much um, turmoil recently mm -hmm. um, and it makes me very sad. And I think a lot of people look at that and, you know, unfortunately I look at, at that and I, now I'm thinking, you know, the house seems to be, have it a lot better in some ways, <laughs> have their, have their stuff together a little bit more. And that yeah. just makes me very sad. So I don't know what's going to happen, but I, I think what we're going to continue to see this riff until people start to um, get unseated, whether it's one side, you know, the progressives or versus the other more moderate Democrats, right. either side, until we get more people in those ranks, we're gonna to continue to see this. Someone has to win something, as they say in politics, in order for that change to happen. Uh, thank you all. We'll be watching the political landscape closely in the coming weeks. One of the key voting blocks in June and November will be the Latino electorate. Earlier this week, correspondent Russell Contreras spoke with an expert on voting trends to find out how the political strategies we're seeing could play out in those communities.